record a digital video streaming contest, and I tried to make a full attempt to win the set, and then I just wrote some swag and sent it to them. Today we're not going to be able to cover every single section of the game in this video, so we're just going to look at bullet time placement and stuff like that here. So I'm attempting bullet time in previous videos before, but you can see all of these videos on YouTube take on the section placement. The first one here was bullet time in 10 seconds. I just had a short clip of me dodging bullets. The second video that I made was called Action Sequence, and this involved basically uh, the conclusion was a bullet time loop. And then the third video that I made in this was called Trigger, and this one also had a bullet time sequence finale. And finally, bullet time in 20 seconds was the quarter digital video that I made. So now we're going to look at how to make bullet time sequence of action sets. So first we need to start by tracking the footage in action set. By doing so, the camera in action set knows exactly where each element in the footage is. We can use Buju or Synthize or any other 3D program to track the footage. Um, I prefer to use Synthize because that's what I've been using for quite a while. I'm going to show you a brief tutorial on how to use Synthize. So we're going to import our footage, make sure all the settings are up to 24 bits, and action set is listed as 1, and con configure all of the frames to be OK. And we're going to see it's inputting the footage, and we're going to scroll through the timeline. And Synthize is really easy because you can just hit this big green auto button and it's going to start automatically tracking all the points uh, in the footage. Now, uh, given that there's not too much motion by the camera stick or too many moving objects inside the footage, Synthize does a really good job of just being able to track all the points for you automatically. So I'm going to fast forward to the end of this section and take a couple of these like the program is done tracking. It took about 18 seconds to finish uh, calculating all the points and making all the 3D alterations. So let's take a look. You can see on the bottom right here that all the points are now very well tracked for this video. If I just scroll through, you can see all the points are nicely lined up. We can go ahead and export this to action set, but what I'd like to do first is to define a set of actions for action set footage. Because right now, the program doesn't know where the ground is or where the vertical direction is. So what I can do is I can click on the XYZ button and I can click on this uh, star here and it defines three points for my action. So I'm going to hit this button here and I'm going to set first the X axis, which I will set as uh, going from this point to this point. So that's the X axis. And then to set the Z axis, I find a point that's perpendicular to the x-axis on the ground somewhere. So somewhere right here, this point is probably going to be good. So I will say yes, apply the coordinate system, let it take a few seconds to uh, apply this, and now if I zoom out here on the on the three plots, you can see that the camera is nicely lined up with the shot. So you can see at the top, you can see it first the camera is facing the front and as I move the camera and rotate you can see the camera motion replicated to death by the camera and that's great so now when we export the action set the program will exactly know which way is X Y and Z so we can go ahead and go to file export capture section to df.me and go ahead and hit the two now we can move to the after effects so here we are in after effects I can go ahead and import the track effect there's a uh, quick click and I track it here import that and also import my plate footage the plate and so now if I double click on the composition and drag my plate footage into the composition you can see that the track of squares perfectly line up with every element in the footage, which is great. Now we can do uh, lots more fun stuff.
up today, we're going to put in uh, a clip of the band doing a 24-hour day, and we're going to have Ian join us, which would import him in the composition. what we're going to do is change the entry point so that the entry point is here so that it lines up roughly with the middle of the bottom of the piece. Then I want to turn him into a 3D object and I'm going to hit toggle and the button here and so he disappears because the camera is not necessary to take him with right now. So what we need to do is position him somewhere in this blank area right here and now we have all these tracks that we need to do over a hundred tracks in this game. So what we need to do is find the tracker that most corresponds to this area right here, or maybe this tracker right here. So we can go ahead and just figure out which tracker that is and just hit play. Okay, perfect. So this one is the tracker that corresponds to this. So I'm going to use the position of this tracker, and I'm also going to hide all the other trackers that I have here. So I can go ahead and mess up the position of this tracker right here and type it in and now you can sort of see Sam's feet here uh, he's actually way too big right now so I'm going to scale him down just a little bit to make him 3% right the footage here is about the right scale because the height is roughly the same as it would be a real person sitting inside of this footage so now we can also move him to roughly the center of the parking lot and we can turn him in the X, Y, and Z direction. And then we can also rotate him so that he's facing the camera because the footage is shot when you're facing the camera. We don't want to rotate it too far out because essentially what this is is like a poster cutout but with a big camera. So if we line it up so that it's directly facing the camera, this will sort of hide the effect, the 2D effect, and sell the overall uh, big camera effect. So this is basically how we get 2D footage such as the green screen and Eve's footage onto the Annie stage. And we'll turn that in in just a second. Okay, so now we move on to the meat of the tutorial, which is to make a bullet time effect. So first what we're going to do is make a new solid. particular keyhole and a particular uh, slide that we expect. And of course you don't see anything, but you can turn off all the layers and make a color. And so basically this is a default particular generator. Um, we're going to make some key changes to emitter and particle. Now I've made a preset called particular bullet time for when I use it. So uh, I can just click on it and work with that right off the bat but we're going to make our preset change right now. So I'm going to hit the emitter. Uh, we're going to change the direction to directional. And we're going to turn down the velocity. And also velocity random. Um, and we're going to make a particle. And we're going to change the size to, let's say, 7 clearly see the particle. Okay, and then the rest of the settings we'll speak later. So basically what this does is it generates particles at the emitter position, x, y, and z. And what we want to do is we want to set keyframes to move the emitter position from one point to another. This way it'll look like the particles are being generated in the sort of a scheme of things. So what we can do is set one keyframe here, move a couple seconds down, set a keyframe over here. So set a keyframe, move a couple seconds down, and set another keyframe. And this 
what this does is basically looks like the already the beginning of a bullet time machine. Okay. So what we're going to do to enhance this effect is we first turn off the particle height so that the at least the length of the clip it doesn't disappear over time. And then we're going to change the size random from bit to bit. effect that is used for both my uh, Core of Digital submission and also for the, the short film of Trigger. Um, it's some sort of a random, random fluctuation in the uh, effect. If I can turn on the particles for a second, I can show basically how the uh, randomization effect works. There we go. Okay. Um, for the first two bullet time videos that I did, the bullet time machine that I did, and also for an action scene, I did not use a random fluctuation in the thing. I used a more, uh, more ordered sort of sine wave oscillation uh, in the bullet time because in the matrix, they use a sort of a oscillation in their bullet time as well. So to do that, I first need to turn down the size random to zero and all the film size in the size, for the first two bullet time effects, in the size, I need to alt click on the stopwatch. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to write an expression that uses the sine function to leverage and use the oscillations that are built into the sine function. So I'm going to say type in map dot sine parentheses time. This will allow the particle to change size over time uh, and oscillate through with the sine function. Now, si since sines oscillate from positive 1 to negative 1, and a particle can't be negative 1 in size, we need to at least make it positive. So I'm going to add 2 to that, add 2 to it, and now you can sort of see that the particle is big, and then it gets small, and then it gets big again, and then it oscillates. And so I can tweak the numbers a little bit more, maybe I want to multiply this by 2, So make the oscillation faster so that it goes up to four times the speed of the first two. So now you can sort of see the oscillation in the effect. And I can turn down the number of particles per second to two. And now you can really see that the bullet time trail is oscillating in a sort of a matrix effect. tweak the particle feathering to do linear feathering and also the opacity a bit so I can change the opacity for a light to this and that looks good and the great thing about particular is it generates these particles in 3d space so if I made a new camera I can basically rotate the camera and you can see that the particles are in 3D space and the, the camera is rotating around the particle. All right. All right, so now I'm going to delete the camera and we're going to implement this oscillation bullet time into our original clip footage. So we're going to turn on everything back again. Okay, the bullet time disappears because the camera, the virtual camera, is not pointing at where we originally set the bullet time effect. So I'm going to reset the two frames here, and now I'm going to uh, reapply the two frames to where the proper frame would be, which is in front of the gun. So I'm going to kind of delete the gun a little bit, and let's say he starts shooting right here. I can set the start of particular by dragging the, the layer over it to start. And then I can turn on particular and also turn on the keyframe. I know roughly where the 
footage of Batman that will shoot the position and be of a position. So I'm going to copy that position onto the X, Y, and Z position of the emitter. So it's going to be two, zero, one. Okay. So this sets the emitter to be at the base of that two. Now I'm going to now turn down the particle size. roughly the size that I want and now I'm going to move the particle up to where the muzzle will be placed. So I'm going to go here and here. The thing about uh, synth eyes is it sometimes inverts the y axis so instead of the particle going up it's now negative the y axis. So that gets a little confusing. bullet trails so that um, lots more bullet trails fly by me and it's a lot more cool than you know, just this single hanging bullet trail that I'm using right here. Okay, so now we basically have the bullet time even and down and we're going to uh, make the effect of displacement um, to look like the bullet time trail is distorting the air um, around First, what we're going to do is pre-compose the bullet time effect that is in the layer. Pre-compose bullet time effect is one. Okay, move all attributes to the second layer time layer. Okay, and we're also going to pre-compose the flight footage, which consists of the background and the shooting.
virtual camera is now in both of the cameras. Okay, so now what we're going to do is select pre-comp um, and then quick and then we go to displacement and displacement we want to use an effect called displacement map. Select that there and then set the displacement map layer to the bullet time rail and also use for horizontal and vertical displacement we can use light since um, we made a, the particles white. So now if we turn off the bullet time effect for like a second, just for a little bit, and wrap the pixels around, we can increase the vertical and horizontal displacement. And then you can see that it's essentially uh, displacing the pixels behind on the white layer and moving them into the the bullet time trail. So it gives it sort of a, a refractive effect. Um, we don't want to exaggerate it too much, but mm, it might be pretty good if we really want to. Okay, and as we scrub through, we can see that the refractive effect remains, and you can see that the light is sort of getting bent around or through as it goes through the bullet time trail. And sometimes it's sort of visible here in some of the dark areas, and also when it's completely light, say above the above the road, it look it is pretty hard to see. So we're going to want to turn back on the bullet time composition, and maybe change it to green, and also turn down the opacity a little bit. This layer will sort of highlight where the bullet time trail is going. So now you can sort of see a little bit better in the dark areas and a little bit of hazy foggy effect so it sort of outlines where the bullet time trail should be okay um, and we can also tweak we can still tweak the bullet time by going back to the original comp pre-comp and going to the bullet time layer and let's say I want to feather this a little bit more so I can feather a little bit more I'm gonna feather here feather a little bit to make it a little bit softer and then you can see these changes are applied to both the displacement and also to the outline here um, so basically this is how the bullet time effect is done and let's feather a little bit more feather Another effect I'd like to add is to put the bullet time pre-comp into the slate pre-comp like this. And maybe I can turn up the opacity a little bit. And this way what happens is the displacement effect also applies to the bullet time um, trail, which originally was in white. This displacement effect applies to that. So this sort of gives it a little white fringe if I see I can move this around it gives it a white fringe that looks a little bit more glassy and done properly it looks kind of like uh, sort of a, a reflection of the light in the scene and gives it a little bit more realistic look so right now we want to go to that one over here so you can see the light the sunlight is coming down and it's kind of you know probably highlighting the top of the, the glass bubble other side is pretty dark and then turn back to the light and this is more of a glassy light like this and then I can also turn back on the original highlighting layer and make it more visible again we don't want to exaggerate these effects too much to change the position of the bullet time trail I can just go back into the bullet time um, original pre-comp layer and I can change for example the final position of the bullet trail and I can change it to 
fly really close to the camera like this. No. Fly really close to the camera. Almost there. Uh, notice that as the camera gets really close, the parts start to stick out. And so what we do is we go down to visibility and we start to develop a sound effect. This way, go back to the final shot here, you see that all of the highlights and um, glassy effects remain there um, because we have used the same pre-comp in all of our effects. So that if we change just one layer here, all the subsequent layers are going to apply the same treatment. So you notice that there are a few limitations to what we're doing here as the four times glassy only looks really good when it's semi far away, but when it's really close to the camera, the effect is kind of destroyed, and we have to manually modify the placement placement map so that it looks a little bit more glassy, or we can modify, say, the feathering of the deer so that it doesn't look so big and out there. Okay, so change the changes can be tweaked for every. Also, a limitation of using the population for a time effect instead of just the random influence uh, of the air, so that we can change the treatment. So this is also uh, this requires a lot more timing, a lot more uh, numbers and calculations to tweak um, to make it look just right. the bullet trail. Um, some people like to use a 2D image and just set it in, say, a red fly by the camera. But if the camera changes its angle too much, then it sort of does the same effect as what we had here with the Sam uh, video clip, where if the camera angle changes too much, it looks fake. Like it looks like a cardboard cutout of a bullet instead of a 3D of a bullet. So what I did was, for at least this video, I created my own sort of 2.5D bullet trail. And how to explain this is I'm going to make essentially two solids and have them perpendicular to each other. And this way, it sort of spells the effect of a 3D object. Okay, so what we do is go to layer, new solid, and we'll call this bullet.